So, friends, the burden on my heart has been this matter of deferred obedience. Now, nobody starts out saying, I'm going to defy God, I'm going to break His commandments, I'm going to live my life. Nobody says, I want to go to hell. Now, when you turn to the 18th chapter of Matthew, which we just read now, here is again a simile taken from sheep and a sheepfold. The twelfth verse, How think you, if a man have a hundred sheep, and one of them be gone astray, doth he not leave the ninety and nine, and goeth into the mountains, and seeketh that which is gone astray? If so be that he find it, truly I say unto you, he rejoiceth more of that sheep than of the ninety and nine which went not astray. Even so, it is not the will of your Father which is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish. Oh, it's not God's will. You see, especially when almost on a daily basis or a weekly basis, a nation has to face sorrow and mourning, death, from all kinds of sources. 9-11s. You see, when a nation has to be commemorating these events, the Holocaust, and the few survivors of the Holocaust. See, when all these dismal events are taking place around us, and when we see how young lives are being snatched away, The power of God's word to reach to the uttermost. Here God says, I have no pleasure. So what is wrong? Deferred obedience. Not seeking the lost. You know, the pastor is paid to do the job, you know. This is the workplace, and in the workplace, we don't want a mention of Jesus Christ. Don't you have any firefighting equipment in a workplace? Don't you have a little red chest which says emergency drugs or something? In Miami Airport, you can see every, you know, every now and again, at a certain distance from each other, emergency heart resuscitators. Well, they do not want people collapsing after a long flight in the airport. Now, a man comes to work after a fight at home, and his work is very poor because of his mind being totally distracted, and the product is very shoddy. It doesn't hold its place in the marketplace. 
and the market share keeps dropping. And the population gets depleted as the jobs have fled. Where did it all begin? A home that is dysfunctional. A family without God. But who is responsible? You know, everything seems to point to me. The pulpit is responsible. I am responsible. What have I done? My master has told me that the one lost sheep is important. And I have to go after that one lost sheep. A mother does not say, this child is a bad egg. Let me just leave the child to itself. The mother may have 20 children, but she does not leave a child saying, Huh, I can do nothing for this fella. Till her deathbed she goes after him. How many boys and girls in this country turn to the Lord Jesus at the pleading of a dying parent. How many? Yes, that's what Jesus gives us. We don't defer obedience. We dare not defer obedience with any child. Okay, I will correct him later. I will find the time. I'm too busy just now. I can't bother. It's time for me to run away to work. So, you know, in my family, because we had a lot of guests, people coming in and going out, it was not always possible for my dad to discipline us in the midst of company. He wouldn't do that. He would say, well, justice is deferred. I'll deal with you later. You know, folks, nobody hears about the rod which drives away the foolishness of a child these days. They have laws now in the European Parliament which say, which have banned the use of any little corrective little rod. Now it's only a token. You don't smash a child and break his head with a rod. No. Not unless you are a big drunk of some sort. And we've got a lot of such people. But my father used to take his little stick and apply it to my hand. See? But it would come a little late, not exactly at the time of the offense. And it used to hurt my father to do this. I would see that my father was perhaps more hurt with that little correction applied. It was not bang, bang, bang. It was a corrective punishment, which I knew I deserved. But today, parents, you know, they do not even correct a child when a child is misbehaving. What, what does it mean? Irresponsible parents, that's all. They defer obedience themselves and they teach their children disobedience. Now, my dear friends, the Spirit of God teaches us 
obedience. My mother used to say, implicit obedience. I want implicit obedience. You just don't see it. You see fathers and mothers shouting their throats off. My, do you, you ought to keep a, a tape recorder going of a few hours in a family, and the family gathers, shout here, shout there, shout, shout, shout. Why? The children have not been taught implicit obedience. My mother would say, come on, I want implicit obedience. That's what I was taught. Now, if you will turn to Matthew 21st chapter, you will see from the 28th verse, What think you? A certain man had two sons. And he came to the first and said, Son, go work today in my vineyard. He answered and said, I will not. But afterward he repented and went. And he came to the second and said, Likewise. And he answered and said, I go, sir, and went not. Whether of them twain did the will of his father? They say unto him, The first. Jesus saith to them, Verily I say unto you, that the publicans and the harlots go into the kingdom of God before you. For John came unto you in the way of righteousness, and you believed him not. But the publicans and the harlots believed him. And you, when you had seen it, repented not afterward, that ye might believe him. John came preaching righteousness. And who obeyed him? The people who were most disobedient. The tax collectors were often people who pocketed a part of that tax. Now, we see a lot of cheating going on in many circles. When there is a war on and people are dying, is that the time to make money? Is that the time to fudge the books? with false accounts and rob money which goes into rebuilding or something. But that's the way we feel we ought to go. A nation cannot go very far that way. In other words, you take lawfully receive taxes and you distribute it amongst your cronies or friends or contractors. Where does a nation go that way? The harlots and the publicans, the tax collectors, who were outcasts in society, Jesus said, they go into the kingdom of God before you. And when you see them doing so and repenting, you don't repent. So Jesus said, hey, you bunch of hearers, you crowd of religious folk who gather round me. You say, yes, 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 well, we're all right, we'll do it. 
We are come out in our Sunday best. You know, that's what they used to call Sunday clothes, you know, Sunday best. Well, what did Jesus say? When you saw them repenting, when you saw them obeying, you didn't have the heart to obey. What kind of people are you? Yes, I see a lot of heathen men, Muslims, Hindus, Buddhists, turning to Jesus. And I see them following the Lord with an earnestness which I don't see in these church mice. I don't see it. The harlots, the publicans, go in before you. What an indictment. What an indictment. You know the truth, but you reject righteousness. Alas, alas. Is the Lord Jesus Christ going to indict us that way this morning? Alas, the publicans and the harlots go in. They see that this is right. This is the right way to go. Righteousness is going to prevail. And we will repent and amend our ways. Oh, my. May the Lord help us to obey his word implicitly and immediately. Otherwise, the job is lost. The lion will have its prey and crunch the bones and retrieval is impossible except a few fragments of the bones. No, that's not what we should go around. You know, when I was preaching in Ireland, they said to me, there is a woman here in the congregation tonight, and her garage was booby-trapped by the IRA. You know, the revolutionary, Irish Revolutionary Army, which was bent upon bombing markets and the innocent and killing, saying, we want Britain out of Northern Ireland. The people of Northern Ireland just want to remain in the British Union, United Kingdom. That's the fact of the matter. But here were these insurgents crossing the border from the south of Ireland. And they said to me, her husband went to get the car and was blown to smithereens, blown to pieces. And she had to go and collect they collected the husband in a plastic bag. Oh, my dear people. So while we are living in such a world around us, shall we wait only to collect a few crunched bones or smashed limbs in a plastic bag. No. We shall obey God and save souls to the right of us in the pews, to the left of us in the doorway of the church, and on to the street and the marketplace. Deferred obedience will not bring us any good. May God help.
Let us pray. Loving Father, help us to take stock how much evil we have done by deferred obedience. The lamb was snatched, the lamb was crunched, we picked up a few bones, and we went merrily along. Is that our history? Father, Father, have mercy upon us. I beseech you. Have mercy upon the nations and this nation. We don't want to pick up fragments of blown up people and lost souls in plastic bags. Nor those of our own children. We shall not defer obedience to our Lord while the harlots and the publicans see the righteousness of God and repent. Help us, Father, to have that broken spirit of repentance. And all the harm and the evil which our lives have begotten may be somehow erased. O oh Lord, the years which the canker worm and the caterpillar and the foolishness of our heart have eaten, restore to us, we pray. In Jesus' holy name. Amen.